Persistence. How long should you persist in the feeling of your wish fulfilled until you just let it go and let it come to you? How long? How much do you persist? And that's what we're going to get into in this chapter. This is chapter 22 out of The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. Persistence. And the first thing Neville Goddard covers here is out of Luke um, chapter 11, 5 verses 9. And then he translates this. He's saying that this Bible verse right here out of Luke, or this chapter and these verses um, can be correlated to the symbolic nature of persistence. So we're going to break this down, and I'm also going to give you my own breakdown from Neville Goddard, so that way we can actually understand it and give you my own perspective of that to help you understand persistence and how long you need to persist in your imaginal act. So let's go ahead and break this down. This is, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in his journey is to come to me, and I have nothing to set before him? Question. And he said from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Luke 11, 5, 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is where Neville Goddard breaks down these three principles. Okay, so there are three principles, principal characters in this quotation. You and the two friends mentioned. Okay, so the first friend is a desired state of consciousness. The first friend is as a desired state of consciousness. The second friend is a desire seeking fulfillment. Three is the symbol of wholeness and completion that your manifestation is now complete. Okay, so loaves, the loaves symbolize substance. The door shut symbolizes the sense which separate the seen from the unseen. And children in bed means ideas that are dormant. Inability to rise means a desired state of consciousness cannot rise to you. You must rise to it. Importunity means demanding persistency, a kind of brazen impudence. Okay, so ask, seek, and knock means assuming the consciousness of already having what you desire. Thus, the scriptures tell you that you must persist in rising or assuming to the consciousness of your wish already being fulfilled. The promise is definite that if you are shameless in your impudence, in assuming that you already have that which your senses deny, it shall be given to you, or should be, shall be given unto you. Your desire shall be attained. Okay, so the Bible teaches the necessity of persistence by the use of many stories. When Jacob sought a blessing from the angel with whom he wrestled, he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Genesis 32, 26. Okay. When the Shumanite sought the help of Elisha, she said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Kings 4.30. The same idea is expressed in another passage. And he spake a parable unto them that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, "There There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto unto him, saying, Avenge me, mine adversary. And he would not he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest she weary me by her continually coming. Continual coming. Luke eighteen one five. Okay, so the basic truth underlying each of these stories is that desire springs from the awareness of ultimate attainment and that persistence in maintaining the consciousness of the desire already being fulfilled results in its fulfillment, results in its fulfillment. It is not enough to feel yourself into the state of the answered prayer. You must persist in that state. So what he's saying here, he gets into a little bit more of this, but I want to break this down right as we right as we're getting into this. Okay, the natural state of your being, of your concept of self, will transition into that new world when you transfer parallel realities. 
and it will be a natural state to you once you have changed your concept of yourself it'll be natural it'll feel natural to you to be in that state it'll no longer be a wanting or a desire for the thing once you once you're ready for it in that natural state of having all this money or whatever you're trying to manifest it'll be a natural state in that new world that you're in whatever world you transfer to when you're falling asleep persisting in this new feeling then you're going to have it okay so however long that takes you persist in it until you're in that world and then you'll know once you're you're in a natural state of it like things are coming to you things are lining up and also you can do this through meditation and figure this out if your inner dialogue is matching up with your imagination like if you go into meditation you see where your 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 thoughts are going and you can you can see where they're headed you know and what they're lining up with and then you'll know whether your manifestation is coming or whether you're in the right world at that point because or you're moving there like you're already programmed for it and it's like in a natural state of it coming to you like you're going to that world like you are programmed you have impressed the subconscious mind with the feeling of it happening and a lot of this comes back to because you really only have to impress the subconscious mind one time with your wish as having whatever you want in this world or in this parallel reality. Okay, so all you have to do is one time, this, all you have to do is impress the subconscious one time, but it has to be a complete 100% feeling that you already have it. it has to, you have to feel the realness of absolutely having this new thing. And once you do that one time, then you have it. But if you persist in it, like if you get it, say you got it the first time you imagine something, you fall asleep with it, you have a 10% belief that it's done. Okay, the second night's 20%, then 40%, then 50, then 60, then 70. Eventually, if you keep persisting in it, persisting night after night, affirming, scripting, falling asleep to my meditations, you know, imagining, visualizing, mentally rehearsing, creating the feeling that you now have this, you're building that naturalness up. The 100% belief that it's already done. And by the time you land it, that 100%, you're going to have it. You're going to have it, but you have to persist in it until you do get that 100% belief. And then you impress the subconscious mind. Then you shift to that world, the corresponding world to your wish as being already fulfilled. And then you'll feel the naturalness of it, the absolute naturalness of it. But you must persist to build that 100% belief. So keep doing it. Repetition repetition keep going keep affirming keep scripting keep visualizing keep falling asleep to my meditations keep doing it till it happens until you get it okay so that's what he's that's what these bible verses are saying here and this is what neville goddard's getting into is it is not enough to feel yourself into the state of your answered prayer you must persist in that state okay so that's essentially what he's saying that is the reason for the injunction. Okay, so man ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18, 1. Okay, so here to pray means to give thanks for already having what you desire, which I believe is is absolutely incredible way to manifest, you know, is to give thanks, you know, and that's what prayer is. You're giving thanks for already having it. You're not asking. You're not, I mean, a lot of times people go into prayer and they, please God, give this to me. You don't do that. You you thank God for giving that you already have it. You're thanking you're thanking God for already giving it to you, and that's the that's the difference between success and failure is asking and then affirming. I am. You know, it's the present moment. You're in the fourth dimension. You're saying I am because the future is now. The past is now. You already have. You don't say I will be something. You said I am something, because that then you're in the present moment, assuming a feeling of the wish fulfilled right now. Okay, so that's what he means by man not always to pray and not to faint okay here to pray means to give thanks for always or already having what you desire only only persistency in the assumption of the wish fulfilled can cause those subtle changes in your mind which result in the desired change in your life it matters not whether they be angels alicia or reluctant judges all must respond in harmony with your persistent assumption all must respond congruently with your persistent assumption when it appears that people other than yourself in your world do not act towards you as you would like it is not due to the reluctance on their part but lack of persistence in your assumption of your life being as you want it to be this goes back to a lot of the previous videos i've made right here guys this is what he's talking about neville goddard hits on this he knew about it and that's what he wrote about it's exactly 100 percent true when it appears that people other than yourself in your world do not act towards you as you would like, as you would like, it is not due to any of any part on there, on them, no part at all. 
but a lack of persistence in your assumption of your life already being as you want it to be. Changing your concept of self, your being, because you're writing, directing, and producing your world today, yesterday. You, you've already wrote the script. You wrote the script today. You wrote the script for me producing this video to tell you this. To, you, you produced this yesterday. You wrote the script for me. And now I'm producing it in your world to you because you have scripted this, okay? So if anything in your world is not the way you want it to be, you don't point the finger at them. You look, you change the script today for tomorrow. You rewrite it by changing your concept of self and persisting in your assumption of your life already being as you want it to be. All right, so that's a, that's a big one here, guys. We're going over this because persistence and, go, and reiteration of this is very important. Your assumption to be effective cannot be a single isolated act. It must be a maintained attitude of the wish fulfilled. I believe sometimes I have done this myself where I have landed it the first night, where I've actually created something the first night. So you can, it can be, a, I believe that it can be a single isolated act. You just have to get to that 100% belief and create it and make it real. Then impress the subconscious mind with it. But if you're trying to do something that's way, you know, it's, it's really a far fetch or a, a, it's a far grasp from your current concept of yourself. Like you're making 30,000 a year right now and you wanna be making $300,000 a month, okay? That may take some persistence on your part. You're not gonna be able to, you may not be able to do that the first night, the one time, but you can do it, just persist in that. Persist in it night after night until it happens, okay? And it will. Maintain attitude of the wish fulfilled. All right, so. And that maintain attitude that gets you there so that you think from your wish fulfilled instead of thinking about your wish. Thinking from your wish fulfilled instead of thinking about it, okay? So is aided by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled frequently, okay? So this build, so what he's saying here is this builds like the difference between thinking of something, like thinking of your wish fulfilled and thinking from it. And that is, and this helps with the, your persistence in imagining it, the frequent nature of your persistence is going to make that, it's going to create a feeling from it more. So you're at first, the first few times you're doing it, you're thinking of it. But as you persist, you start to think from it. Now you're thinking from it. Now you're inside the movie creating it, you know, and changing your concept of yourself, impressing the subconscious mind with this and thinking from it. Because that's when you make it real is when you're thinking from it. Frequency. That's how you change it from thinking of to from. So I'm gonna, I'll cover that a lot more because that's, that's really good. I love this right here, okay? So not the end of time, that makes it natural. Okay, so let me read that again. It is the frequency, not the length of time that makes it natural. That to which you constantly return constitutes your truest self. Frequent occupancy of the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the secret to success or the secret of success. Okay, so frequent occupancy of the feeling of the, so imagining, affirming, scripting frequently, persisting frequently of your, of your wish fulfilled is the secret of success, secret of getting what you want. Frequent, frequent reiteration of your wish fulfilled, imagination, scripting, affirming all day, all night, falling asleep with it, did it until you get it, until it happens. All right, I love that. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter. Next, we have case histories. All right, leave a comment if you guys want me to cover these case histories, and I will do that as well. We'll go. We'll start these ones immediately. Okay, so let's go back over this one more time. Okay, so basically what we're covering here is persistency. And Neville Goddard is saying, persist in it until it comes into your reality. Persist in it. So affirm, script, you know, uh, visualize, mentally rehearse every day, all day, before you go to sleep, as much as you possibly can, as frequently as you can, until it happens, until it happens, and especially if it's a bigger thing. You're trying to, you're trying to 100x your income. You're trying to 100x your income. Persist in it until it happens. Persist. Don't just do it for one night or two nights and then be like, oh, I'm not making, you know, $100 million in a year right now, so I'm going to give up. Don't do that. Persist in it. And also, I want to take you back to this point that we've, what we extracted here was very important about changing from thinking of it to thinking from it. So that is when you imagine it frequently. So when you're visualizing, and at first you may be thinking of it, and you're trying to think from it, you're trying to get in the scene, and it's a little bit difficult. So if you continue to do this, you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, you change from thinking of it to from it, and that comes from frequency and persistence. 
All right, guys, so I love you guys very much, and I know you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for and leave that comment. I'll cover these case histories and break these down for you as well in the coming videos. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Into fact. So you learn to assume and learn to persist in the assumption, and it will come to pass. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to cover Neville Goddard's own personal testimonial. It's a case history from the Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, chapter 23. This is actually where he illustrates his own testimonial, but in the book he doesn't say it's him, but later in his lectures he does admit this is, this is actually his story here. So I'm gonna break this down right now, I love this. Okay, so it will be extremely helpful at this point to cite a number of specific examples of the successful use of the law of assumption. Actual case histories are given in each of these. The problem is clearly defined and the way imagination was used to attain the required state of consciousness is fully described. So I think that these are very powerful as it relates to like the finishing of the book. Now he's broken down all the exercises to change your present concept of yourself. So now you can actually see these actual case histories where people have actually applied this and what they had to do to actually make it happen and persist in it, uh, change their concept of themselves, imagine, visualize, affirm, all of these things. So this is very important to cover these. Okay, so in each of these instances, the author of the book was either personally concerned or was told the facts by the person involved. Okay, so this is actually Neville Goddard's testimonial right here. This is a story with every detail of which I am personally familiar with. Okay, so this is Neville Goddard. In the spring of 1943, a recently drafted soldier, which is Neville, was stationed in a large army camp in Louisiana. He was intensely eager to get out of the army, but only in an entirely honorable way. The only way he would do this was to apply for a discharge. The application then required the approval of his commanding officer to become effective. Based on the army's regulations, the decision of the commanding officer was final and could not be appealed. So once he put in this request and say it was denied by his commanding officer, that was it. There was no one above him that he could appeal it to to try to get it overturned. Okay, so that's what he's going to do right now. Okay, so based on the army's regulations, this was it. This was the absolute top you could go. Okay, so the soldier following all the necessary procedures applied for the discharge, which was Neville. Within four hours, this application was returned disapproved. It means it was denied. Convinced he could not appeal the decision to any higher authority, military or civilian, he turned within to his own consciousness, determined to rely on the law of assumption. So he put in this request and he was denied this request from his commanding officer. No way to appeal it to anyone higher. So he turned from his 3D circumstances, from his 3D world that's telling him that, no, you can't get out of the army. There's no way you can do it. You were disapproved. There's no other way. So he disregarded his, everything in his 3D world because it's a hologram, okay? So he looked within himself and then created an imaginal act that said approved. And we're going to get into that right now, okay? So the soldier realized that his consciousness was the only reality. That, this, that his particular state of consciousness determined the events he would encounter. That night, in an interval between getting into bed and falling asleep, he concentrated on consciously using the law of assumption in imagination. So he, he's mentally rehearsing as he's going to sleep. He's preparing for sleep and he's creating this imaginal act thinking from it as he's going to sleep. He felt himself to be in his own apartment in New York City. He visualized his apartment. So he's in the he's in Louisiana. Um, he's in the army, but he's imagining himself to be in his apartment in New York City. So he's he's thinking from it. He's creating the apartment in detail here. It's where he gets into it. He visualized his apartment. That is, in his mind's eye, he actually saw his own apartment, mentally picturing each one of the familiar rooms with all of the furnishings vividly real. Remember this, this is, this is a really good part right here. This is very important. Mentally picturing each one of the familiar rooms with all the furnishings vividly real. Sometimes I'll do that too. When I'm creating an imaginal act, I'll actually, if I'm trying to create like moving into another house or something, I'll walk through the rooms. I'll see the rooms in my mind. Like I'll already go there, you know, before the imaginal act and I'll see everything, all the furnishings in the room, the way the rooms are sitting, I'll walk through in my imagination and see all these things to make it vividly real for my mental rehearsal. And that's what he does here, mentally picturing each one of the familiar rooms with all the furnishings vividly real. 
Okay, so with this picture clearly visualized and lying flat on his back, he completely relaxed physically. In this way, he induced a state bordering on sleep, at the same time retaining control of the direction of his attention. So he's getting into this relaxed state. He's laying down. His eyes are closed. He's imagining he's going into this state or the drift, a state akin to sleep, where he's almost unconscious, but he still has control of the direction of his attention. Okay, so when his body was completely immobilized, he assumed that he was in his own room and felt himself to be lying on his own bed in New York, a very difficult or, or a very different feeling from that of lying on an army cot. Okay, so he's imagining himself back in New York and creating it, making it vividly real. He's no longer in the army. So in his imagination, he rose from his bed in New York, walked from room to room, touching various pieces of furniture. He then went to the window and with his hands resting on the sill, looked out on the street on which his apartment faced. So vivid was all of this in his imagination that he saw in detail the pavement, the railings, the trees, and the familiar red brick of the building on the opposite side of the street. So he's actually looking, not, not only just walking around and touching all the furnishings, but he's actually looking out the window on the opposite side of the street and he's looking at these these red bricks of this building across the street so as he's making it really real he's actually getting into detail that he's actually there he then returned to his bed and felt himself drifting to sleep okay so in his new york apartment so he walks around looks out the window then he goes back to his bed in new york and then goes to sleep in his bed in new york so he creates this whole scene making it real he knew that it, it, it was most important in the successful use of the law that at the actual point of falling asleep, his consciousness be filled with the, the assumption that he, was already, that he was already where he wanted to be. So this is, the ver this is a vital point right here. I'm going to say this again. I want to cover this because this is so important. You must, this is very important for the successful use of the law of, of the actual point of falling asleep. So when you're actually about to fall asleep and you feel yourself about to fall asleep, your consciousness should be filled with the assumption that your wish is already fulfilled. So completely consumed with the consciousness being completely consumed with the consciousness of now being where you want to be. Okay, so all that he did in imagination was based on the assumption that he was no longer in the army. So that's what you want to do. You get to that point where you feel that you're no longer in the past, in that present place that you're actually in, when your consciousness is totally filled with this new place that you're in, whatever that may be, okay? So you can use this in all different aspects of imagining and creating a new reality for yourself. Okay, so night after night, the soldier enacted this drama. Night after night, in his imagination, he felt himself honorably discharged, back in his home, seeing all the familiar surroundings and falling asleep in his own bed. This continued for eight nights. He did this for eight nights, okay? So it took him eight nights for, he persisted for eight nights in this feeling. So maybe the first night he did it, he had like 30% feeling, you know, he was persisting in it for that one night. He got like 30%, didn't quite have it. Second night, third night, fourth night. As he got to the eighth night, he was able to land it. Because as we know, the more you persist and create and focus on your imaginal act, the realer it becomes, the better you become at it. And the more, and the more you think from it rather than of it, okay? So you're creating this and making it completely real. Because the more you persist and doing this over and over and over, the more you're not thinking of it, you're thinking from it. Because the first couple times you do it, you might be thinking of it. And you're using so much force to do it. And the more you do it, the more effortless it becomes. Then you start using least action. And then before you know it, you're using least action and thinking from it. And by the eighth day right here that Neville Goddard landed it, okay? So he's, he's not forcing it. He's already done it for seven nights. So the eighth night, you know, it's, it's become more simple. And he's, he's using less effort. And he's, and he's thinking from it. So he gets that 100% belief in tricking the subconscious mind to believe that he's now in New York. Okay, so his ob okay, so for eight days, his objective experience continued to be directly opposite to his subjective experience in consciousness each night before going to sleep. So he wasn't seeing anything happen in his 3D world. He wasn't seeing anything change yet. So, but he persisted in it regardless of the outside circumstances. Okay, and on the ninth day. Orders came through from the battalion headquarters for the soldier to fill out a new application 
for his discharge. That's a little weird, you know. It's not. There's no coincidence there. Okay, so that's a little strange. So Neville Goddard probably thought at this point that he's got it. Okay, so shortly after this was done, he was ordered to report to the colonel's office. During the discussion, the colonel asked him if he was still desirous of getting out of the army. Upon receiving an affirmative reply, which Neville Goddard said, absolutely, yes, I am still, you know, I'm still serious and desirous of getting out of army. And then the colonel said that he personally disagreed. And while he had strong objections to approving of the discharge, he had decided to overlook these objections and to approve it. Within a few hours, the application was approved and the soldier, Neville, now a civilian was on a train bound for home okay so when you land something when you actually persist in it like neville goddard did here in this testimonial in this his case history he persisted until he landed it with 100 percent belief and there's going to be something that happened even even the commanding officer said he had his objections towards it he did not want to approve it but something in his mind was telling him to do it like there was a higher power that was guiding him there'll be something like this that'll happen but most of the time there'll be like a logical sequence of events you know that'll have to take place in order for that to happen like all of a sudden the commander had second thoughts you know of, of giving him a second opportunity a second application to put in for his discharge okay these all these things can happen if you disregard circumstances in your 3d world and persist night after night in your wish fulfilled and like i said before you keep persisting in it he did it eight nights neville goddard did it had to do it eight times okay neville goddard had to do it eight times he persisted in it for eight nights filling his consciousness with being in the new york apartment and he created something to happen in his world he created the naturalness of it and fell asleep thinking from it and with least action okay so this is how you do it guys and we'll, i will continue here with the other case histories we've got case two here this is a really good one all right, guys, I love you guys very much. And don't forget to give me all your questions and I will read those in the column box below and give me one thing you guys are grateful for and, and stay tuned for the next video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're getting into a true story, a true testimonial using the law of assumption from an extremely successful businessman. And this is actually Neville Goddard's brother. He doesn't actually say it in the story, but this is exactly who this is. Okay, so this is a striking story of an, an extremely successful businessman demonstrating the power of imagination and the law of assumption. So this is a, a story that demonstrates the power of imagination, your power of imagination and the law of assumption. And uh, Neville Goddard says, I know this family intimately, which is, it's actually his family. And all the details were told to me by the son described herein. The story begins when he was 20 years old. He was next to the oldest in a large family of nine brothers and one sister. The father was one of the partners in a small merchandising business. In his 18th year, the brother referred to in this story left the country in which they lived. So he left the country in which they lived and traveled 2,000 miles to enter college and complete his education. Shortly after his first year in college, he was called home because of a tragic event in connection with his father's business. Through the machinations of his associates, the father was not only forced out of his business, but was the object of false accusations and impugning his character and integrity. At the same time, he was deprived of his rightful share in the equity of the business. The result was he found himself largely discredited and almost penniless. It was under these circumstances that the son was called home from college. He returned, his heart filled with one great resolution. He was determined that he would become outstandingly successful in business. The first thing he and his father did was to use the little money they had to start their own business. They rented a small store on a side street not far from the large business of which the father had been one of the principal owners. There they started a business bent upon a real service to the community. It was shortly thereafter that the son, with instinctive awareness that it was bound to work, deliberately used his imagination to attain an almost fantastic objective. This is another thing that happened to Neville Goddard when he was growing up, because this is his brother, Victor, that did this. And uh, he, just witnessing these things and his brother talking about them, 
actually made started to make Neville believe in his imagination and that imagination actually creates reality. This is actually one of the stories, one of the foundational stories that created Neville Goddard's work is the things that he he actually saw with his own eyes and was very observant of the way that things were being created. Okay, so it was shortly thereafter the son was instinctive awareness that it was bound to work, deliberately used his imagination to attain an almost fantastic objective. Every day on the way to, way to and from work, he passed the building of his father's former business, the biggest business of its kind in the country. It was one of the largest buildings. This is in Barbados, okay, with the most prominent location in the heart of the city. On the outside of the building was a huge sign on which the name of the firm was painted in large, bold letters. Day after day, as he passed by, a great dream took shape in the son's mind. This is Victor, Neville Goddard's brother. He thought of how wonderful it would be if it was his family that had this great building, his family that owned and operated this great business. One day, as he stood gazing at the building in his imagination, in his imagination, he saw a completely different name on the huge sign across the entrance. Now the large letters spelled out his family's name. In these case histories, actual, actual, the actual names are not used for the sake of clarity. In this story, we will use hypothetical names and assume that the son's family's name was Lordered, which <laughs> was actually Goddard. Okay, so where the sign read FN Moth and Company, in imagination, he actually saw the name letter by letter, N Lordered and Sons. He remained looking at the sign with his eyes wide open, imagining that it read N Lordered and Sons twice a day. So he did this in his imagination. He did this twice a day, week after week, month after month, for two years. He persisted in seeing this sign saying Goddard and Sons, not FN Moth and Company, but he was actually seeing Neville got or N Goddard and Sons and he remained attentive to this imaginal scene in his mind and he persisted in it okay so he was convinced that if he felt strongly enough that a thing was true it was bound to be the case and by seeing in imagination his family's name on the sign which implied that they owned the business he became convinced that one day they would own it okay so during this period, he told only one person what he was doing. He confided in his mother, who with loving concern tried to discourage him in order to protect him from what might be a great disappointment. Despite this, he persisted day after day. He persisted, remember that word right there, persistence, persistence, day after day. Two years later, the large company failed and the coveted building was up for sale. On the day of the sale, he seemed no nearer ownership than he had two years before when he began to apply the law of assumption. During this period, they had worked hard and their customers had implicit confidence in them. However, they had not earned anything like the amount of money required for the purchase of the property, nor did they have any source from which they could borrow the, necess the necessary capital making even more remote their chance of getting it was the fact that this was regarded as the most desirable property in the city and a number of wealthy business people were prepared to buy it on the actual day of sale to their complete surprise a man almost a total stranger came into their shop and offered to buy the property for them due to some unusual conditions involved in this transaction the son's family could not even make a bid for the property they thought the man was joking. However, this was not the case. The man explained that he had watched them for some time, admired their ability, believed in their integrity, and that supplying the ca capital for them to go into business on a large scale was an extremely sound investment for him. That very day, the property was theirs. What the son had persisted in, seeing in his imagination, was now a reality. The hunch of the stranger was more than justified. So, his imaginal act created this. Okay, so his imaginal act, seeing the sign say N. Goddard and Sons, we actually created this whole thing. We shifted his reality, we shifted his world or his parallel realities. He shifted into that world that corresponded with what he was seeing. So anything could have happened. Anything could have happened that was going to create this to happen. If you persist in it, it will happen because you're not taking anything away from anywhere, anyone else because there's an infinite amount of those buildings in all these infinite parallel universes. So an infinite amount of people could own that. But in his world, in his world, he created 
this imaginal scene. He saw it in his mind. So he shifted to that world where the building was his family's. And that's what you can do as well. You're not taking anything from anyone. Regardless of what you do, you try to create a relationship or a lot of money. It doesn't matter what you're creating. You're not taking anything from anyone else because there's an infinite amount of you's and there's an infinite amount of me's. So there can be an infinite amount of people with an infinite amount of versions of you in different worlds. And you can do this with anything. That's, that's the power of imagination and the law of assumption and the infinite realities that we live in, the parallel realities that we live in. Anything is possible. All right. So today this family owns not only the, the particular business referred to, but also owns many of the largest industries in the country in which they live. All right, so this also created the, the integrity of the business to him doing this created their family to be integral as well and honest and made other people want to invest in them. The son seeing his family name over the entrance of this great building long before it was actually there was using exactly the technique that produces results by assuming the feeling that he already had what he desired by making this a vivid reality in his imagination. By determined persistence, regardless of appearance or circumstance, he inevitably caused the dream to become a reality. He caused his dream to be a reality by persisting and seeing that sign say what he wanted it to say night after night, day after day, visualizing even for a couple minutes a day or even 30 seconds a day, seeing this in your mind's eye, you know, persisting in this feeling. All right, guys, that is the end of this case history, but we'll be getting into case number three. But I think that this case history that we just went over with Neville Goddard's brother, Victor, is actually going to help a lot of people understand have the power that you have within you and the infinite realities that we're living in. You can transfer to any reality that you want, depending on what you're, you feel to be true in your current world. You can shift to that parallel reality that the congruent reality with what you feel is true in your world, what you consent to as true based on your concept of yourself. So you can change this by seeing something in your mind's eye, which also created a new version of him and his family in order to get to that layer, that layer of the universe or the subconscious mind in the hologram actually lined up with that, the, that business being his and all the other businesses. So they're imagining the best at all times and creating you know, the world that they want to be living in. But I, I know this case history right here is going to help a lot of people that actually watch this video. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. And feel free to leave any comments or questions that you have. And I, I read every single comment you guys leave. So leave any comment, questions, and give me one thing you guys are grateful for. I notice that not enough people are leaving what they're grateful for in the comment box below. You guys used to do really, really good with this. I want you guys to leave one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a case history, a true, a true story. It's actually one of my favorite stories and testimonials using the power of imagination, the law of assumption. This is actually a story with somebody that went to consult with Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard was doing coaching and he was actually coaching this lady and um, the, her grandchild actually overheard the coaching and he decided to use it himself and he uses it in this story it is actually one of my favorite testimonials from the power of awareness by neville goddard all right so let's go ahead and get into it this is the story of a very unexpected result of an interview with a lady who came to consult me okay so neville goddard is coaching this lady right here okay so one afternoon a young grandmother a businesswoman in new york came to see me she brought along her nine-year-old grandson who was visiting from his home in Pennsylvania. In response to her questions, I explained the law of assumption, describing in detail the procedure to be followed in attaining an objective. The boy sat quietly, apparently absorbed in a small toy truck while I explained to the grandmother the method of assuming the state of conscience that would be hers were her desire already fulfilled. Okay, so... I told her the story of the soldier in a camp, which was actually Neville Goddard's story. Each night fell asleep, imagining himself to be in his own bed, in his own home. When the boy and his grandmother were leaving, he looked up at me with great excitement and said, I know what I want, and now I know how to get it. <laughs> Surprised, I asked. Neville Goddard asked the, the boy. He said, I asked him what it was he wanted. He told me that he, is, he had his heart set on a puppy. To this, the grandmother vigorously protested, telling the boy that it had been made clear repeatedly that he could not have a dog any, and under any circumstances. 
that his father and mother would not allow it, that the boy was too young to care for it properly, and furthermore, the father had a deep dislike for dogs. He actually hated to have one around. All these were arguments the boy, passionately desirous of having a dog, refused to understand. Now I know what to do, he said, every night, just as I am going to off to sleep. I am going to uh, pretend that I have a dog and we are going for a walk. No, said the grandmother, that is not what Mr. Neville means. This was not meant for you. You cannot have a dog. Approximately six weeks later, the grandmother told me what was to her an astonishing story. The boy's desire to own a dog was so intense that he had absorbed all that I had told his grandmother on how to attain one's desire. And he believed implicitly that at last he knew how to get the dog. Putting this belief into practice, for many nights the boy imagined a dog was lying in his bed beside him in imagination. He petted the dog, actually feeling its fur. All right, so he's creating the imaginal act here of, of having the puppies actually petting the fur, petting the dog, actually feeling the present moment with the dog, the present feeling of already having a dog, and things like playing with the dog and taking the dog for a walk in his mind, in his imagination. He's imagining walking the dog, petting the dog, playing with the dog dog all these things that would imply that he had a dog now okay so within a few weeks it happened a newspaper in the city in which the boy lived organized a special program in connection with kindness to animals week all school children were requested to write an essay on why i would like to own a dog after entries from all the schools were submitted and judged the winner of the contest contest was announced the very same boy who weeks before in my apartment in new york had told me now I know how to get a dog was the winner of that. Okay, he, he won that. He actually wrote a story on it and he actually was the winner in an elaborate ceremony which was publicized with stories and pictures in the, in the newspaper. The boy was awarded a beautiful collie puppy. In, in relating this story, the grandmother told me that if the boy had been given the money with which to buy a dog, the parents would have refused to do so and would have used it to buy a bond for the boy or put it in a savings bank for him. Furthermore, if someone had made the boy a gift of the dog, they would have refused the gift or given it away. Okay, so... But the dramatic manner in which the boy got the dog, the way he won the citywide contest, the stories and pictures in the newspaper, the pride of achievement and joy of, of the boy himself, all combined to bring about a change of heart in the parents. Okay, so, and they found themselves doing that which they never conceived possible. They allowed him to keep the dog. All this, the grandmother explained to me, and she concluded that by saying that there was only one particular kind of dog on which the boy had his, set, his heart set on, and that was a collie. Okay, so basically, it doesn't matter. Your circumstances do not matter in your world. There's going to be something that's going to happen. Just like if, if the boy would have gotten the dog a gift, they would have denied the gift. Or if he would have raised, if somebody would have gave him enough money to buy the puppy, they would have turned the money down, or they would have used it for a bond for the boy for his future investments. Okay, so but it happened in such a way where he actually wrote a paper to the newspaper and all these pictures and everything, and he he actually created an event to happen where his parents could not refuse him to actually have the dog. And he, this is what happens when you use your imagination to create something. There's going to be circumstances are going to change. You're going to shift to the reality where it has to happen. It's like I said before, there's an infinite amount of worlds to shift to. And when you're imagining and feeling that you have something, no matter what it is, if it's amount of money, if it's a dog, if it's a dog like this story or a relationship or a new car, a new house, doesn't matter what it is. If you can create this feeling, there's going to be something crazy that's going to happen to you that's actually going to manifest this in this world and whatever has to happen will happen and there's nothing that can stop it from happening except your lack of persistence in this feeling of or actually assuming and affirming and scripting something to actually take place so this is another great story this is one of my favorite stories because the way that it happened like the parents would have would not have even have allowed him to have a dog if somebody gave him one or gave him enough money to get one or if somebody gifted him the, do the parents would not have allowed him to have it but he got it in such a way when he imagined it but because the subconscious mind knows everything 
And there's a world that connects, that, that, is, that corresponds with your feelings. And it will happen. It doesn't matter. Nothing can stop that from happening. And everything is already set in place depending on your imagination, what you're feeling and consent to be is true and what you're visualizing and you're feeling in your world right now. So I love this story. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. I love you guys very much. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below or anything that you want me to cover or any questions you have. I read all the comments. So leave whatever you would like in the column box below and we'll see you in case history number four, which is actually a really good story, a very good testimony we're getting to next. I'll see you guys in that video. You can create anything you want by using the power of your imagination and circumstances don't matter whatsoever. If you want something, if you want to create something, whether that's a new house, a new career, being in a different location, or even helping or assisting someone in your life that is in a troubled situation, you can do that with the power of your imagination. And that's what this testimonial is about we're going to get into today from the power of awareness by Neville Goddard. This is actually someone that Neville Goddard was consulting with, teaching her how to use the power of imagination or the law of assumption. And she came into contact with someone in her life, a family member that was in distress. So she wanted to help her. So she taught someone else what she learned from Neville Goddard. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is case number four from the power of awareness by Neville Goddard. This was told by the aunt in the story to the entire audience at the conclusion of one of my lectures. During the question period following my lecture on the law of assumption, a lady who had attended my lectures and had personal consultations with me on a number of occasions, she rose and asked permission to tell a story illustrating how she had successfully used the law of assumption or the power of imagination. She said that upon returning home from the lectures and from the coaching and the consultations she had with Neville Goddard, she had found her niece distressed and terribly upset. The husband of the niece, who was an officer in the Army Air Force station in Atlantic City, had just been ordered, along with the rest of his unit, to active duty in Europe. She tearfully told her aunt that the reason she was upset was that she had been hoping her husband would be assigned to Florida as an instructor. They both loved Florida and were anxious to be stationed there and not to be separated. Upon hearing this story, the aunt stated that there was only one thing to do, and that was to apply immediately the law of assumption or your power of your imagination so she said let's actualize it so she's giving examples she's teaching her niece what she learned from neville goddard and his lectures and the consultations that you the power of your imagination you can create anything and that circumstances don't matter so she says let's create this let's actualize this she said if you were actually in florida so she's giving this demonstration she's talking to her niece saying if you were in florida right now if you were actually in florida what would you do that's the question you're asking questions to the subconscious mind and then you're creating a new feeling state basically is what this does it creates a new feeling state like i do in a lot of my meditations i'll ask questions which will create a new feeling state within you and actually expand your your imagination to think out of the box and to create a new feeling state presently okay so she said what would you do you would feel the warm breeze so you're, you're so she's creating the scene in her mind she's asking these questions and then she's creating the warm breeze so she's bringing in a sense okay so the feeling she's feeling the breeze she's feeling the breeze and you would smell the salt in the air so you're smelling and tasting the salt in the air you, and so you're bringing those senses your taste your smell and you're feeling the breeze the warm breeze you would feel your toes sinking down into the sand so she's feeling the sand with her feet now well let's do it all right now she says let's do this let's create the scene presently that you are now in florida because if she's now in florida that would mean that her husband would have to be had station been stationed or moved as an instructor in florida as if the way that she wanted it to happen so she's creating this new scene in her mind she's visualizing it in her mind asking these questions creating making a scene real to her by thinking from it by creating the senses because when you create the senses in the scene like the smelling the tasting you know the feeling and all of these things inside the scene then you're making it real to you and when you make something real then it has to take place 
in your 3D world. All right, so let's continue here. Okay, so they took off their shoes and they turn out the lights and then in imagination, they felt themselves actually in Florida, feeling the warm breeze, smelling the sea air, pushing their toes into the sand. These things are creating the realness of the imaginal act. And this is why it's very important to do this, to bring your senses in, your smelling, your tasting, your feeling, the, the sand, things that would imply that you're now in this location that you want to be in. She wants to be in Florida. She wants her husband to be stationed in Florida as an instructor. So if she was now in Florida, that would imply these things would have to take place. So she goes through this in her imagination very simply. So it appears that they only actually do this one time. They actually only do this together one time. They create this scene in imagination. And within 48 hours, within two days, the husband received a change of orders. His new instructions were to report immediately to Florida as an Air Force instructor. Five days later, his wife was on a train to join him. So even though the aunt was actually performing the imaginal act with her niece, she didn't actually join in and go to Florida with her because she was just teaching her. She wasn't actually in the scene. She was just teaching her, her niece how to use the power of assumption and actually just walking it through with her, not actually feeling the things, just kind of training her niece on how to do it. And that's why I believe that her aunt didn't actually go to Florida with her. It was just the niece because the niece was actually in it and she was actually had that burning desire to create the scene like vividly real but the aunt wasn't really desirous in going to Florida. So that's what she lacked. That's why she didn't join the niece in actually going to Florida with her. She was just pretty much training her. And that's what I believe happened here because in assuming the state of constant requires, she did not go to Florida. That was not her desire. On the other hand, that was the intense longing desire of the niece. So basically, they did this one time together. They imagined this scene one time. It doesn't say how long, but it was, if I had to guess, it was probably only 10, 20, maybe 30 minutes they did this together one time. And within two days or 48 hours, it actually happened. They actually had a shift in their reality, which changed absolutely everything. And I love this story because it demonstrates how easily you can use the power of imagination even doing it one time and just cr and bringing your senses in and visualizing in your mind's eye in your imagination and putting you know because i i also feel that the the sand from the beach you know that the feeling of your toes in the sand is a real feeling and if you can actually attain that feeling that would imply that something is actually happening right now. And that's a very powerful sense to bring in and smelling the salt in the air, tasting the salt in the air. And all these things that they did with this imagined state made it so real that they actually shifted realities, like the parallel realities that she shifted to a world where her husband was now going to be stationed in Florida because she's now in Florida. So everything had to correspond or be congru congruent with that feeling state that she impressed with her imagination and creating that. And I think this story is really powerful because it shows how much power you have with your imagination and how you can do this one time and make it real and have something happen within a couple of days, uh, 48 hours, two days, and within five days, she's in Florida. And she, her husband gets new orders within 48 days. And, she, and when you create this scene like she did, I would imagine that after the first time, she landed it because she was detached, detached from the outcome. Because once you feel something to be real, as if it's already happened, you're no longer attached to it because it's already happened. She's living in that state. And then she went to sleep in that state. She fell asleep with the state of now being in Florida or as if it was already completed. That version of herself, that concept of herself now was now in Florida. And she was in that present being of being in Florida. And that's why this happened and was created letting it go and detaching from the outcome from feeling that it already happened feeling something to be uh, already happened that creates the the letting go it creates the detachment from it because you now have the thing you're no longer wanting it you're no longer desiring it that desire was was eliminated that she had no more desire to be in florida because it she already was in florida so that's that detachment which allowed everything to come into place and change circumstances you know, for that to happen in her life. 
All right, guys, that is the end of this video, and I will be getting into case history number five very shortly, which is a very powerful testimonial. And leave me any comments or, or anything you want to leave in the column box below. Leave that. Share anything that's on your mind because I read all of those, and a lot of times I get a lot of ideas from those because we're all connected. Ideas for future content that I will be creating for you because I read all of those. And be aware of the scammers that impersonate me within the comments. So if somebody comments, back or replies to your comment and you see that it has my profile picture on it or my logo on it that is not me if they try to tell you to contact me at a specific number or whatsapp that is not me they are impersonating me so do not respond to those just report those all right guys i love you guys very much and i'll see you guys in the next video Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you a testimonial on manifestation, something that actually happened the following day. This person in this testimonial created some and used a specific technique for manifesting something to happen and the following day, very, very quickly, it manifested into her world. So I'm going to share with you that story here. This is case five from Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness. This case is especially interesting because of the short interval of time between the application used of the law of assumption and its visible manifestation into the 3D world. A very prominent woman came to see me in deep concern. She maintained a lovely city apartment and a large country home, but because the many demands made upon her were greater than her modest income, it was absolutely essential that she rent her apartment if she and her family were to spend the summer at their country home. In previous years, the apartment had been rented without difficulty early in this, earlier in the spring, but the day she came to me, the rental season for summer sublets was over. The apartment had been in the hands of the best real estate agents for months. So she was trying to rent this house out for months with the best real estate agents and she could not get it rented. Okay, so keep that in mind as the story progresses. But no one had been interested into coming to see this apartment, regardless of how many real estate agents she had was showing the house. Nobody wanted to rent this house. And when she had described her predicament to Neville Goddard, he explained the law of assumption and how it works and how it could actually solve her problem, that she could solve this problem with her imagination using the law of assumption. And Neville Goddard suggested that by imagining the apartment had been rented by a person desiring immediate occupancy and by assuming that this was the case her apartment actually would be rented in order to create the necessary feeling of naturalness of naturalness the feeling that it was already a fact that her apartment was rented already i suggested or neville goddard suggested that she drift off into sleep that very night imagining herself not in her apartment but in whatever place she would sleep where her were her apartment suddenly rented so what neville goddard here is suggesting which i really really like is he's he's teaching her to attack it indirectly instead of attacking it directly by creating a new tenant like she's meeting with a new tenant that's moving into her current residence rather she's creating a scene to the end she's going all the way to the end which would imply that she did have a new tenant already which is sleeping in the residence that she wants to be in her new dream home she's no longer sleeping in her current residence but she's sleeping in her dream house okay so she's attacking this indirectly which i really really like and my grandfather used to tell me about this all the time it's a very powerful way to create because you have less of an attachment to it you're actually letting things happen the things that are supposed to happen in between, just allow those things to happen, go to the end and then create that without actually worrying about the little things, about the tenants and everything. That's what a lot of people get stuck on is the things in between. Just go to the end and let everything just work itself out on its own. Don't worry about the things in between. Just go to the end and just allow it to happen. Okay, so the interview took place on Thursday. At nine o'clock the following Saturday morning, she phoned me from her home in the country, excited and happy. She told me that on Thursday night, she had fallen asleep actually imagining and feeling that she was sleeping in her other bed in the country home many miles away from the city apartment as she was occupying. So she did this one night, okay? So she did this Thursday night. She did this one time. And then on Friday, the very next day, a highly desirable tenant, one who met all her requirements as a responsible person, 
not only rented the apartment, but rented it on the condition that he moved in that very day. So this is why I like this testimonial the most, or one of my favorites, is because how fast this actually worked. She visualized this Thursday night, and by Friday, the very next day, she actually, the tenant actually moved in. Like she actually had a tenant contact her and actually moved in the very next day. I mean, some could argue that this happened so quickly because it wasn't that big of a deal. But if you look at it, if you look at it, that she had hired all the different, the best real estate agents to try to rent this property out and try to find a tenant, but they could not do it. They did this for several months. Okay. They did this for several months trying to find a tenant that matched everything that she needed, a responsible person that she could trust that could move in immediately. But as soon as she used the power of her imagination, she had a tenant the following day. There's no coincidences there. The power of imagination, the law of assumption works if you apply it if you are being a doer and not just a hearer only you're actually using this for things in your life so if you're watching this video and you find yourself in a similar predicament maybe not real estate maybe not trying to get a new house or find a new tenant but something similar to that try this method try sleeping in your new residence or or being somewhere that that implies that you are already in the end and then let everything work out so if there's all these circumstances in your world that aren't making it happen, use the power of your imagination. Just try it one time and see what happens. Maybe you've been watching these videos and you've been seeing these testimonials, you wanted to use it, but you just really haven't done it. Maybe push yourself to the next level after seeing this testimonial and just try it out for yourself and see if it works for you. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. I wanna give you a brief recap, okay? So this, this comes down to a woman that was trying to move into her dream house, okay? And in order for her to move into her dream house and be able to afford that dream house, she had to rent out her current residence. So she hired all kinds of real estate agents and for months and months, they weren't able to rent this house. So she wasn't able to move into her dream home. So she, she met with Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard explained to her the power of assumption, the power of your imagination, and told her, don't no longer sleep in your current residence. Go to sleep tonight in your dream home. Go to sleep tonight in your imagination already in your dream home and then allow everything else to work itself out. So she took Neville Goddard's advice, went, did this one time. She fell asleep in her dream house one night and the very following day, she had a new tenant move in directly and it was a perfect tenant. It was a tenant that was responsible, a tenant that she could trust and a tenant that could move into her, her current residence immediately. So this technique worked in one application. She slept in her new house one night and then the following day, it all came into fruition into her 3D world. The naturalness took place everything connected she transferred to the the parallel reality that was congruent with her current being of living in her new residence which caused it to happen almost immediately like in a short amount of time all right guys i love you guys very much don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below and leave any comments anything you guys want to add to this i want to know all your ideas and beware of the scammers in the comments replying to you saying that they're me they're impersonating me that is not me i would never i'm never going to ask you to contact me at a specific number or whatsapp or telegram those are scammers so do not respond do not act on those just report those all right guys, i love you guys and i'll see you in the next video Today, I'm gonna to share with you a testimonial where the power of imagination actually saved a man's life. He was on his deathbed. He was suffering from a rare heart disease, and this disease resulted in a disintegration of the organs, and Neville Goddard went to see this man on his deathbed and explained to him what consciousness is and how the power of his imagination could actually cure him if he were to use it appropriately. The doctors were even telling this man and his family that there was nothing that could be done, that there was, there was absolutely nothing that could cure him and save his life. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is case number six from Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness. Only the most complete and intense use of the law of assumption could have produced such results in this extreme situation. Four years ago, a friend of our family asked that I talk with his 28-year-old son who was not expected to live. He was suffering from a rare heart disease. This disease resulted in a dis disintegration of that organ or of the heart. Okay, so a long and costly medical care 
had been given, but to no avail. It, the, the doctors weren't able to help him. Doctors held out no hope for recovery. For a long time, the son had been confined to his bed. His body had shrunk to almost a skeleton, and he could talk and breathe only with great difficulty. His wife and two small children were home when I called, and his wife was present throughout our discussion. I started, but so Neville Goddard goes and sees him right here. So Neville Goddard goes to the hospital and actually sees this man right now. He says, I started by telling him that there was only one solution to any problem in life or in your world, in your 3D world. And that solution was a change of attitude. Since talking exhausted him, I asked him to nod in agreement if he understood clearly what I said. This the man agreed to. I described the facts underlying the law of consciousness. In fact, that consciousness was the only reality. Okay, so Neville Goddard described the facts underlying the law of consciousness, that everything is him pushed out, that his world was actually created by him. And anything that's happening in his world was ultimately creating from something within him. So he needed to change something within him in order to change his illness, to cure his illness, because everything was within him. He was creating the illness himself. And the fact that consciousness was the only reality, I told him that the way to change any condition was to change his state of consciousness concerning it. As a specific aid in helping him to assume the feeling of already being well, I suggested that in imagination, he see the doctor's face expressing incredulous amazement in finding him recovered contrary to all reason at least from the last stages of an incurable disease that he see him double checking his examination and hear him saying over and over it's a miracle it's a miracle so he's telling this man in his deathbed which doesn't even have the energy to actually speak he's actually he doesn't even have the energy to speak so neville goddard is telling him what to do to visualize the doctor's face in his imagination, seeing the doctor's face with amazement and saying over and over, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, you are cured. So he's explaining to this man how to visualize, how to create something in his imagination. But you notice first that Neville Goddard explains to him exactly what consciousness and breaks it down like the power of awareness, like we go over on the channel. He's explaining to him exactly what everything is, who I am is, and the power of consciousness and what we came from, the hologram that we're living in, and that everything is created from inside of you and projected out into your world. Like everything is you pushed out. So he explains all of this and then he teaches him how to visualize or what to visualize. Seeing the doctor's face with amazement saying, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, and then doing this over and over and over in his mind and creating this, a new version of himself, a new concept of himself and shifting these parallel realities into the, the, the corresponding reality where he's actually healed. And the doctors find, you know, that he, in amazement, that it's a miracle, it's a miracle, you are now healed. So after Neville Goddard explains what consciousness is and how everything is operated in the world that you're living in and explains how to visualize and what to visualize, this man not only understood this clearly, but he believed it implicitly. He promised that he would faithfully follow this procedure. His wife, who had been listening to Neville Goddard explain this to her husband, actually assured that she would also diligently use the law of assumption and her imagination in the same same way that Neville Goddard explained this to her husband. The following day, Neville Goddard sails for New York. All this taking place during a winter vacation in the tropics. And several months later, Neville Goddard received a letter saying the sun had made a miraculous recovery. On my next visit, on Neville Goddard's next visit, I, he met with him in person. He was in perfect health. So this man that was on his deathbed, the doctor said, there's no way you can survive this. You're, you're, there's no cure for this illness that you are going to die. This man was in perfect health, actively engaged in business and thoroughly enjoying the many social activities of his friends and his family. So this power of imagination cured this man on his deathbed, even after the doctor said that they could do nothing for him. Neville Goddard explained what consciousness is and how everything is, is you pushed out. Your world is created by your assumptions, by your feeling states. 
Consciousness is powerful and it is created from inside of you and projected out. And as you change this, these attitudes and these feelings and what you're observing and what you're assuming, you shift to that parallel reality where the doctors are saying it's a miracle. It's a miracle, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. Something's gonna happen and because circumstances don't matter. Once you change your inner talking, your inner dialogue, your feelings, your assumptions, everything is within you. So if, you, if there's any illness, something within you is creating that illness, whether that's from some belief that you had, you have from your childhood. Like for example, if you had people like your grandparents or your parents have, have all had a certain illness, you have that belief that maybe you're gonna get it too. That's not true. This is not true, so don't limit yourself to that. These are all based on your beliefs from your past, and this is all created from within you. You can change all of these beliefs, and you can do that through revision. You can do that through visualizing exactly how we demonstrated or Neville Goddard demonstrated this story for us in the power of awareness. There are actually even a lot of stories that I've been reading lately about how fasting, about not eating for a certain amount of days and things like that have cured cancer. And what they don't understand with this is what this does is it, it creates a new version of yourself. If you go 30 days without eating, this is causing your concept of self to change. Like in, internally, you are changing your personality and that's what's causing the cancer to be eliminated because you're transferring to another parallel reality where, because you're a new version of yourself. If you fast for 30 days, you're gonna be a completely different person. It's gonna change everything about you and it's going to change your inner dialogue it's going to change what you're what you're unconsciously visualizing because we're always we're always creating we're always whether it's conscious or unconscious you're creating the life that you're living in right now whether you're aware of what you're visualizing before you get there or not and what this does is when you fast it changes all that it changes your inner dialogue it changes what you're visualizing so you're transferred especially when it's this much of an intense fast where you're actually fasting for 30 days this is why it's curing these cancers and all these illnesses is because it's changing your inner dialogue is changing what you're visualizing is changing what you're feeling is changing what you're assuming you're assuming all of these new things with your new version of yourself and that's what's curing the cancer they give all the credit to actually fasting but it's what the fasting is doing within you that's curing you from this so it's another form of the law of assumption fasting and getting rid of these illnesses by fasting is changing your inner dialogue using the law of assumption you're visualizing differently it's just another way to attack this but you can actually attack it just by the way that this man did in this video right here because the law of assumption is like the foundation everything is within you so any any treatment that is outside of you that you're doing in your 3d world is just changing your assumptions within it's just another indirect way of using the law of assumption. Anything in your 3D world you do is an indirect way of changing your inner dialogue, changing your thoughts, changing your feelings, changing your attitudes, and changing what you're actually creating by transferring to those different, different parallel realities. So, but what Neville Goddard was teaching is, is to go directly to the source, which is you internally visualizing, affirming, scripting as if it's already happened, and then visualizing these things, and then you're ultimately going right right to the source using the law of assumption because everything is you pushed out. So if you go within, instead of going without and changing things without, you're going directly to the source, which is you, and then you're transferring and healing yourself of all these things and then shifting to these other parallel realities that line up with your new inner dialogue, with your new imagination, with your new visualizing, your scripting, your affirming, whatever you're doing. But everything, that's the foundation. The law of assumption is a foundation of change completely in your world. That's the foundation. And anything that surrounds that is just another, is just an indirect way of using the law of assumption. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. That was case number six from The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. We'll be moving on to case number seven next. And don't forget to leave all your comments or any ideas that you have in the column box below. I read all of those. So, and I really take those under consideration for, for future content. And beware of the scammers in the comments, guys. So if somebody responds to you if someone replies to your comment and it appears to be me and it's asking you to contact them at a specific number or it's whatsapp or it's telegram or it's snapchat that is not me that's an impersonator just report them that is not me do not fall for that all right guys i love you guys and i'll see you guys in the next video
This successful testimonial is a perfect example of how you can change your entire world and create the world that you want by changing your concept of yourself. And Neville Goddard goes over this really, really well in this illustration. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. This story illustrates the successful use of the law by a New York business executive. In the fall of 1950, an executive of one of New York's prominent banks discussed with me a serious problem with which he was confronted. He told me that the outlook for this personal progress and advancement was very dim. Having reached middle age and feeling that a marked improvement in position and income was justified, he had talked it out with his superiors, but they told him that any major improvement was impossible and that if he was dissatisfied with his job, he could look for a new one. This, of course, only increased his uneasiness. So this businessman is trying to increase his income, but he keeps coming up to roadblocks, okay? So he's coming and hitting brick walls with trying to increase his income. But later he finds that it's only a change of concept that is needed, a concept of himself that lines up with the amount of money that he wants to make. Because if you wanna make a certain amount of money, you wanna make a million dollars a year, your concept of yourself needs to mirror that because you have to be able to sustain that amount of money. You have to be able to line up with your beliefs and everything you consent to be true in your world in order to do that. So Neville Goddard starts teaching him that here. And when this businessman is actually discussing this with Neville Goddard, he explains that he had no great desire for big money, but that he had to have a substantial income in order to maintain his home comfortably and to provide for the education of his children in good schools and good colleges in the future. This he found impossible on his present income. The refusal of the bank to assure him of any advancement in their near, near future resulted in a feeling of discontent and an intense desire to secure a better position with considerably more money. Okay, so he doesn't really desire to have more money, but he needs more money to live his comfortable life and to make sure that his children go to the colleges and universities that they want to go to. And he's tried to get an advancement with his current job, trying to get his salary increase, but he keeps being turned down. So what needs to change here is his concept of himself because everything in his world right now is as it is based on his concept of himself. So this businessman actually did tell Neville Goddard, he confided in him the kind of job that he would like to have where he could be making more money, which is in managing investment funds of a large institution such as a foundation or a great university. And this is where Neville Goddard explains to him that he needs to change his concept of himself in order for his exterior world to change that you have to change your internal world before your external world is going to change. So in explaining the law of assumption, Neville Goddard state that its present situation was only a manifestation of his concept of himself. And Neville Goddard declared that if this businessman wanted to change the circumstances in which he found himself, he could do so only by changing his concept of himself. In order to bring about this change of consciousness and thereby change his situation, I asked him to follow this procedure every night just before falling asleep. Okay, before we go any further, I want to explain about changing your concept of yourself. Whether you're affirming, whether you're scripting, whether you're visualizing, it doesn't matter. What these things are doing is changing your concept of yourself. Your concept of yourself is the fundamental aspect of everything that you experience in your 3D world. And when you visualize being a multi-millionaire you're visualizing having all this money that is changing your inner dialogue It's changing your concept of yourself and then that is projected out into your 3d world and changing that transferring to different parallel realities is exactly how that works so ultimately what you're doing when you're affirming scripting or visualizing all you're doing is changing your concept or your personality of yourself and when you change your personality or concept of yourself your inner dialogue changes that means you're observing a different world you're transferring to a different world now through the parallel realities so you're shifted and you're projecting and observing an entirely different world by what you consent to be true based on your inner dialogue, which is created from your affirmations, from your visualizing, from your scripting. So that's how you change all these things from within yourself and then transfer to these different parallel realities. All right, so here's the procedure that Neville Goddard gave this businessman to perform as he's falling asleep every single night. So Neville Goddard says, okay, so in your imagination, you are to feel that you are retiring at the end of one of the most important and successful days 
of your entire life. Of your entire life, you need to feel this. You need to create this. You need to feel that you are at the end of the day, one of the most important day, the most successful day that you've ever had in your entire life, and you are falling asleep with that feeling. You are to imagine that you actually closed a deal that very day to join the kind of organization that you that you desired to join and exactly in that capacity that this man this executive wanted so you need to create that scene that feeling and however you create that feeling whether that's through scripting visualizing or affirming you need to capture that feeling and make it real as if it's happening and it already happened all day long like you were you were creating these business de deals all day long all day long, you're creating this business deal. You're successful that you are now working for this company where you're making this much money, this foundation that you desire to work for and create that feeling and then fall asleep with that feeling. And Neville Goddard further explains and suggests to him that if he succeeded in completely filling his mind with this feeling of now working for this foundation and having the job and having this successful business deal and then saturating his, his mind with this feeling that he would experience a sense of relief. He would sense this relief and then he would fall asleep with this sense of satisfaction and relief that he has now closed this, this deal that implies that he is now living the life that he wants. And what that does is it, it changes his foundational concept of himself then he tricks the subconscious mind. So he's falling asleep with this new personality of actually doing all these things all day long and creating that, even though it didn't actually happen in his 3D world, he's creating these events to happen and then creating the feeling following those events and then falling asleep with that. And what that does is changes your concept of yourself, whether you're scripting, visualizing or affirming, that's what it's changing is your concept of yourself, your inner dialogue. And then that's when you trick the subconscious mind and project yourself or change and alter your parallel reality. You're transferred to that parallel reality that lines up with this new version of yourself. And once he creates this feeling and falls asleep with it, he falls asleep in this new mood or this new concept of himself, the uneasiness and discontent would be a thing of the past. He would no longer be impressing the subconscious mind with the, with the old limitations of uneasiness and discontent. He's falling asleep with this as a successful new person, a new being. And Neville Goddard assured this businessman that if he, if he did this faithfully every single night, that he would get the position that he wanted, that he desired. He would absolutely get that position in no time. All right, so this was the week of December. So he's explaining these exercises. He goes over all this with the businessman in December. So night after night, without exception, the businessman followed the procedure that Neville Goddard gave him. And early in February, a director of one of the wealthiest foundations in the world asked him if he would be interested in joining the foundation in an executive capacity handling investments. After some brief discussion, he accepted. Today at a substantially higher income and with the assurance of steady progress, this man is in a position far exceeding all that he had hoped for. Okay, so this man, this executive, he followed Neville Goddard's procedure. He created a new concept of himself that reflected or that was that was based on the belief that he now had this job working for this foundation and handling these investments. So he successfully used the law of assumption to change his concept of himself as he's falling asleep, as he's drifting into his subconscious lover, which is the subconscious mind, and telling the subconscious mind now that he is a different person. So that's gonna shift his parallel realities to line up with this, this new future. This new future that he desired was created by the change of his concept of himself, which this is exactly, exactly why I designed my sleep meditations the way that I do, because they create this exact feeling that this executive created as he was falling asleep, but he had to do it manually, okay? So he didn't have a lot of assistance, so it took a few months, or it took a couple months for him to do this from December to February. But I'm thinking this can happen faster, especially if you have some help, like I create my meditations, my sleep meditations, where you can actually fall asleep and be instructed 
as you're falling asleep, even with these affirmations, these, these questions that are being asked to you within the meditations that are creating the same feeling that we just went over in this. And I'm going to put that playlist to the, my meditations on a card on the screen at the end of this video. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for or anything you want me to cover in the future. Leave that. Any ideas you have for content, leave that in the comments box below and beware of the scammers impersonating me in the comments so if you get a response or a reply to your comment and they're saying that they're me they want you to, to contact they want you to contact them at a specific number whatsapp telegram or snapchat that is not me that's a scammer impersonating me so do not respond to that just report them all right i love you guys and i'll see you in the next video Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to bring in a testimonial or an illustration of the conscious use of the power of imagination by two people concentrating on the same objective at the same time. I absolutely love this story because they use this. They It's a husband and wife and they're manifesting something together, but they don't actually know that they're manifesting it together, but they're focused on the same thing, which makes it even more powerful. And it kind of goes back to not discussing what you're manifesting. So they don't even discuss this together, but they're both working on the same thing together, which I absolutely love this. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is case number eight from The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. The man and wife in this story have attended my lectures or Neville Goddard's lectures for a number of years. It is an interesting illustration of the conscious use of this law by two people concentrating on the same objective at one time. Okay, so the man and wife were an exceptionally devoted couple. Their life was completely happy and entirely free from any problems or frustrations. For some time, they had planned to move into a larger apartment. The more they thought about it, the more they realized that what they had their hearts set on was a beautiful penthouse. In discussing it together, the husband explained that he wanted one with a huge window looking out on a magnificent view. The wife said she would like to have one side of the walls mirrored from top to bottom. They both wanted to have a wood burning fireplace. It was just a must. It was a must that the apartment be in New York. For months, they had searched for just such an apartment in vain. So they're doing it in the 3D. They're not actually changing their imagination or their concept of themselves. They're not actually visualizing anything. They're just going out in a 3D world and looking for this apartment. Okay, so that's what that means when they're searching in vain. In fact, the situation in the city was such that the securing of any kind of apartment was almost an impossibility. So it was very difficult to find an apartment that they're looking for in New York. Even if you had the money, you couldn't find one. They were they were already booked. They were already booked solid. There was there was a waiting list trying to get these types of apartments. Like it says right here, they were so scarce that not only were there waiting lists for them, but all sorts of special deals, including premiums, the buying of furniture, etc., were involved. New apartments were being leased long before they were even completed. Many rented from the blueprints of the building. So there's a long wait list for these. These are very hard to come by. So they're searching in vain. They're trying to find one in the 3D world. But, and then they learn through Neville Goddard to use the power of their imagination. And that's what they do. So early in the spring, after months of fruitless seeking, they finally located one which they seriously considered. It was a penthouse um, apartment in a building just being completed on Upper Fifth Avenue facing Central Park. It had one serious drawback. Being a new building, it was not subject to rent control and the couple felt the yearly rental was really, really high. So in fact, it was several thousand dollars a year more than they had considered paying. During the spring months of March and April, they continued looking at various penthouses throughout the city, but they always came back to this one. Finally, they decided to, to increase the amount they would pay substantially and made a proposition which the agent for the building agreed to, agreed to forward to the owners for consideration. It was at this point, without discussing it with each other, each determined to apply the law of assumption. It was not until later that they learned what the other had done. So they're both imagining the same thing. They both went to Neville Goddard's lectures, but they're not discussing what they're doing together. 
They're just working on the same thing, which I think goes back to not discussing your manifestations. And they could be much more powerful this way because you're not blocking one another and you're actually in sync with one another without even speaking about it. So they're both in sync with this. They're going to Neville Goddard's lectures and they're learning about the power of imagination and they both start visualizing exactly the way they want this apartment to look like, but it's the same apartment, okay? So night after night, they both fell asleep in imagination in the apartment they were considering. The husband lying with his eyes closed would imagine that his bedroom windows were overlooking the park. He would imagine going to the window the first thing in the morning and enjoying the view. He felt himself sitting on the terrace overlooking the park, having cocktails with his wife and friends, all thoroughly enjoying it. He filled his mind with actually feeling himself in the penthouse and on the terrace during all this time. Unknown to him, his wife was doing the same exact thing. Unknown to him, his wife was doing the same exact thing. Okay, so and several weeks went by without any decision on the part of the owners but they continued to imagine as they fell asleep each night that they were actually sleeping in the penthouse one day to their complete surprise one of the employees in the apartment building in which they lived told them that the penthouse there was vacant they were astonished because theirs was one of the most desirable buildings in the city with a perfect location right on central park they knew there was a long waiting list of people trying to get an apartment in their building. The fact that a penthouse had unexpectedly become available was kept quiet by management because they were not in a position to consider any applicants for it. Upon learning that it was vacant, this couple immediately made a request that it be rented to them, only to only to be told that this was impossible. So they found out that the, that the actual apartment building they lived in presently actually had an opening for a penthouse and that was what they were looking for so all this started happening with because they're sleeping in this penthouse they're creating this penthouse and then this one opens up because of that but they're still being told that it's an impossibility that they move into it okay and the fact was that not only were there several people on the waiting list for a penthouse in the building but it was actually promised to one family. Despite this, the couple had a series of meetings with the management at the conclusion of which the apartment was theirs. So they did get this and they did use action, but they still slept in this penthouse and then it's acted intuitively. And these doors just started opening from their imaginal acts. They're sleeping in this new penthouse. So one actually opens up and it's in the same building as theirs. Then they go after it and then they just they feel it out intuitively and then they have meetings with the management at the conclusion the apartment was there so everything came together just as they imagined and there was nothing that was going to stop that from happening and once they saw something open up they actually took action and actually made that happen they like i said here they had a series of meetings with management and at the conclusion of that the apartment was theirs okay so the building being subject to rent control everything lined up with what he was imagining or what they were both imagining the building being subject to rent control their rental was just about what they had planned to pay when they first started looking for for the penthouse for a for a new apartment the location the apartment itself and the large terrace surrounding it on the southwest and north was beyond all their expectations and in the living room on one side is a giant window 15 by 8 with a magnificent view of central park exactly what they were imagining and one wall is mirrored from floor to ceiling and there is a wood burning fireplace everything that they imagined actually came true so when they created this imaginal scene in their minds there was going to be something that happened and it just happened to happen in their own apartment building something very quick and simple actually they didn't have to to move very far into this new apartment which actually worked out that's why i love this this testimonial so much is because they both worked on it together and then they both they took action when they saw that a door open and it was obvious for them to take some action they did that and i do believe this is important because sometimes when you're imagining things and you're visualizing you're scripting or you're affirming something to be true in the present moment you're going to have things like this doors are going to open but they're going to require you to walk through them and you're going to need to take some action if they're leading you towards it if you see something that's leading towards your imaginal act being fulfilled then you need to take that action and get there and do whatever it takes to get that and i I do believe that taking action in these types of circumstances these types of imaginal acts do work and they're very very effective all right that's the end of this video guys i love you guys very much we're going to be getting into the next one this is the last case history in this book but i'm going to be moving towards the law in the promise and i'm going to be 
I'm going to be also doing those for you guys as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into that and leave any comments that you have, any ideas you have, any any content that you would like me to look over. I read all of the comments and I will read all of your comments as well. And remember, the scammers are in the comments. So if someone um, replies to your comment and they are impersonating me, they say they're me and they're trying to get you to contact them at a specific number, WhatsApp, Telegram or Snapchat. Do not respond to them. Just report them. All right, guys, I love you and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're covering failure, 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 failure. If you have failed in any respect to any manifestation that you've created or you're still waiting, you're still persisting and you're starting to have some doubts about whether this works or not or anything like that. We're going to cover that in this video today out of chapter four, 24, Failure from the Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. And this is very good. So I'm going to break this down even further from Neville Goddard. And I'm going to explain all this because some of this can be confusing out of this, out of this book from Neville Goddard. But I'm going to break this down thoroughly so you can completely understand um, how it works with the Law of Assumption and how you cannot fail if you follow these instructions. All right, so here we go. All right, so this book would not be complete without some discussion of failure in the attempted use of the law of assumption. It is entirely possible that you either have had or will have a number of failures in this respect, many of them in really important matters. And if I had to say something about this, it's going to be more in important matters that you're going to fail because you have an attachment to the result. And having an attachment to the result of your manifestation can hinder you from actually achieving that end or getting that desire, whatever it is. That's why the ladder exercise, for instance, the ladder exercise, everyone that does that, 99.9% .9 of anyone that actually follows the ladder exercise and actually climbs the ladder to sleep every night, but is writing it down, I, I will not climb a ladder, I will not climb a ladder. You're climbing the ladder to sleep, you're falling asleep while climbing this ladder and the reason why this is manifested so quickly this i did this exercise on two different occasions and the reason why it manifests so quickly is because you're not attached to the out to the outcome because who cares about climbing a ladder and if you can create money or you can think of money or relationships or a new physique or a brand new car a brand new house whatever you're trying to manifest if you can detach yourself from the want of it, just like climbing a ladder, it'll come to you just as quickly as climbing the ladder did, as climbing the ladder did, because you don't have an attachment to any result. And that's another secret with manifesting, detaching from any specific result in whatever you're trying to manifest or whatever you're doing in life, detach from any specific result, even if it's a relationship, even if it's a, if it's a, a, a new career, detach from any specific result that you're thinking that you want, and you will absolutely have it. Once you detach from that outcome of whatever you're trying to manifest, you will absolutely have it. You have increased your odds tremendously of, of getting it. And that's another part of failure that I want to discuss that Neville Goddard didn't discuss in this chapter. So I wanted to break that down. Detach from any specific result in your with your manifestation. And um, that'll lead you to it much, much faster. All right, so let's continue here. If having read this book... Having a thorough knowledge of the application and working of the law of assumption, you faithfully apply it and in any effort attain some intense desire and fail. What is the reason? What is the reason you're failing? If to the question, did you persist enough? You can answer yes. Okay, so some people are going to persist. They're going to persist, but they're going to be attached to some specific result while they're persisting. And that's part of the reasons why they failed. Okay, so but he covers something different here. Okay, so. To the question, did you persist enough? You can answer yes to that, and still the attainment of your desire was not realized. What is the reason for failure? The answer to this is the most important factor in the successful use of the law of assumption. The time it takes your assumption to become a fact, your desire to be fulfilled, is directly proportionate to the naturalness of your feeling of already being what you want to be, which I come on to take us back to persistence. If you're, if you're persistent... If you're persistent in your affirmations and your scripting and you're mentally rehearsing this and you're detached from the outcome, then you will you will absolutely you will not fail. There is no failure. There will be no failure for you if you can do if you can follow that rule right there of being 
of detaching from any specific outcome of what you're manifesting. And this, I'm going to be more clear about what this means. This means that you don't care whether it happens or not. You don't care whether you climb it, you climb a ladder or not, or whether you make the money or not, or you have the relationship or not. You're detached from either way, getting it or not getting it. Either way, you're still happy and you're still fulfilled. You're still succeeding. You're still going to live the life that you want to live. And you have this in your mind. You keep this in your mind. And a lot of this can come down to your confidence, your confidence in yourself. Because if you know, if, if I'm manifesting something and it doesn't happen for any reason, I don't care because I know that I can create this over here or I can create that over there. If this fails, I have 10 other avenues. But because I think like that, I'll get, the, I'll get it the first time. I will get the thing. Because I think that way, even though I didn't have to go to that those other routes, I didn't have to fail here, or then have to attempt this one and attempt that one. I I didn't fail because I had that outlook without any specific result. Being like, this has to work. You know, it's like it's like a newborn baby you're holding so so close to you. You know, you're, you're thinking you're gonna, it's going to fall out of your hands. You know, and you're so you're so attached to this. You're so attached to the failure of it. You know that you are causing yourself to fail. And that's a big part of this. Neville Goddard doesn't cover this, but I like what he does here. This is really good. Okay, so, and the answer to this is the most important factor, the, the, the use of the law of assumption. The time it takes your assumption to become a fact, he's talking about naturalness here, which I also agree because if you're making $30,000 a year right now, you want to be making $300,000 a year. And because that's a big jump. Okay. So you're going to have to persist in this. Usually, I mean, it can happen quickly for some people. If you're detached from the result, the naturalness will take place much faster. That's another part of detaching from any specific result. The naturalness will come much faster for you because you'll be connected with the thing. You're no longer telling the subconscious mind that you don't have this thing. Because a lot of times, that's why the not technique was even used. That's why Neville Goddard used the not technique, because it detached you from the outcome of the event. You're saying, I will not do this. Okay, so I will not make a million dollars. So you're no longer attached to it. Okay, so in, and that's translated to the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is feeling this. Okay, he doesn't, he doesn't want $3 million, so he must already have it. Let's give it to him. In other words, that's the language that's used with the subconscious mind when you're detached from any specific outcome. So essentially, when Neville Goddard is talking about you have to feel the naturalness of it, you, you, that's with persistence and, and actually transferring to that present concept of self of already having the thing. Once you, once you transfer your personality to be someone that's making $3 million a year or whatever it is, you have transferred your version of yourself now and you've become this person that makes that. So you're automatically going to be like really responsible and disciplined. You're going to be this person that can sustain this amount of money. So you're going to, you're going to start growing in this way, you know, and, and as you grow, you're going to start seeing your income start growing and you're going to start seeing yourself being more, being a better communicator and you're going to start networking. You're going to start learning certain skills. You're going to have different skill sets and, what this does is establishes the naturalness of making this $3 million a year or whatever you're trying to make. So that's what he's talking about with this. And this can be translated into anything that you're trying to create, the naturalness of it, detaching from the outcome and all of these things. So, but he says right here, okay, so if you're not feeling natural in your state, that is the secret of your failure. If it doesn't feel natural, like you want to, for, for example, you're imagining making $300 million a year with a corporation like you're this new concept of yourself, but you still find yourself being undisciplined, sleeping till noon, living in your mother's basement, uh, flipping through TikTok all day, getting drunk on the weekends, doing recreational drugs or using drugs every day. These things, this means that you're not in your natural state to sustain that kind of wealth. So it's not going to happen. So you're not going to have that naturalness of making that kind of money and being this entrepreneur, whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay, so that's what Neville Goddard's talking about here. And uh, regardless of your desire, regardless of how faithfully and intelligently you follow the law, if you do not feel natural about what you want to be, you will not be it. So that comes back to what I just said, the naturalness of it, whatever you're creating. You're trying to create, even in a relationship, if you're trying to create the perfect specific person or a special person or the a relationship of your dreams but you're not that person like you're you're not a good person like you you're che you know you're a cheater or you, you know you're not 
You're not that type of person that you're looking for. That's not going to be natural for you to find this great person when you're not a great person yourself. So that that's where you're fighting the subconscious mind because you transfer to these parallel realities. You're transferring to these parallel realities that mirror your being, your concept of yourself. So who are you? Who are you? And that's what you're going to get. And that's what manifestation is. Manifestation is changing your concept of yourself to match and mirror what you want. So become what you want and you will have it. It's not about what you want. It's about who you are as a person, which is is, is stated so many times in this book, The Power of Awareness, and it is absolutely true. All right, so that is a big part of this, of manifesting. It's absolutely one of the largest parts about it and the secret to manifest. If it does not feel natural to you to get a better job, you will not get a better job. The whole principle is vividly expressed by the Bible phrase, you die in your sins, John 8, 24. And this is translated into this right here. You do not transcend from your present level to the state desired. That's what that Bible verse means in John. You die in your sins. Okay, the Bible phrase, you die in your sins. That's exactly what it means. You don't transcend to the level of the state desired. Okay, you you failed. Okay. Okay, so how can this feeling of naturalness be achieved? The secret lies in one word, imagination. For example, this is a very simple illustration. Assume you are securely chained to a large, heavy iron bench. You could not pos possibly run. In fact, you could not even walk. In these circumstances, it would be natural. It would, it would not be natural for you to run. You could not even feel that it was natural for you to run. But you could easily imagine yourself running. In that instance, while your consciousness is filled with your imagined running, you have forgotten that you are bound. In imagination, your running was completely natural. The essential feeling of naturalness can be achieved by persistently feeling your consciousness with imagination. So he kind of goes back here to being persistently persistent with your imagination, constantly imagining this thing, constantly imagining it, imagining yourself being what you want to be or having what you desire. All right, so I'm going to explain this a little bit better. Um, Neville Goddard kind of contradicts himself a little bit here where he's saying now that as long as you persist that you will you will attain your desire and the naturalness will come. But in the original part of the chapter here, he, he, he comes in by saying, if to the question, did you persist enough, you can answer yes to that and still the attainment of your desire was not realized. What is the reason for the failure? So now he's saying that all you have to do is persist, even though the question, the original question is that, or he, what he states is that you can persist enough and still not get your desire. So I'm going to expound on this, which I already kind of have with the naturalness of it. By if you're, if you're failing, that means that you haven't attached from the outcome. Um, that's a big part of the natural part of it and being in that new version of yourself. Being in the new version of yourself that is so confident that you can create anything that you want that it doesn't matter anymore. It does not matter whether you succeed with this manifestation. You have the, the, the mindset that even if this fails, I got 10 other things that I can do. I have so many options. I'm so confident with my manifestations and the things that I create that I'm not attached to any specific outcome with any one of them. And that will detach you from the outcome, which will create uh, the naturalness of it and, and then transform your concept of yourself to a very confident manifesting person. And because we know that you don't get what you want, you get who you are. So you're going to be very confident in this new personality, this new conception of yourself that you have, and that will overcome your failures. If you have failed or you are failing, that is the reason. That is 99.9% .9 of the reason why you're failing because you have um, a desire for some specific end or you know, you have, you're attached to the specific outcome of that manifestation, so you have to detach from that. And I can give you guys exercises on that in further videos but essentially just knowing that you can start consciously being aware of this while you're manifesting and work on it, you know, just like that. But I can give you exercises on that. Okay, so let's continue. Progress can spring only from your imagination, your desire to transcend your present level of being. What you truly and literally must feel is that with your imagination, all things are possible. This is another point that he brings up here that will also help you by understanding that consciousness is the one and only reality and what you're conscious of is an illusion and that the past you know is isn't real and you're living in a hologram it's a high-tech simulated game 
there's parallel realities and everything that you've been taught and trained to believe about your world is all incorrect. I mean, you're not living in a solid reality, you know, like you were told to. And once you start understanding this and filling your, your mind up with this and focusing on it, and meditating on this, this will, this will a lot of times free up your mind to where you can start manifesting anything that you want because now you have a new belief. You have a new belief of the world that you're living in and that you can create anything. And that's where Neville Goddard um, continues here with. You must realize that changes are not caused by caprice, but by a change of consciousness. You may fail to achieve or sustain the particular state of consciousness necessary to produce the effect you desire. But once you know, is where it gets into it. But once you know that consciousness is the only reality and is the sole creator of your particular world and have burnt this truth into your whole being, then you know that success or failure is entirely in your own hands which understanding this knowledge that we're learning on this channel will separate you from the rest, you know, of people that don't, that still think they're living in a solid reality. Quantum physics shows now that, you know, this infinite parallel reality that basically we're, li we're living in a high tech simulated game or the matrix. Some people call it the matrix. It's a hologram that's, that's projected from inside of you out and you can create, you change your world by your present level of being and by your inner dialogue, your inner talking, you're changing everything in your world that way. And, and once you burn this into your core, your whole being, then your manifestation abilities grow substantially. All right. So that's what he's talking about here. So whether or not you are disciplined enough to sustain the required state of consciousness in specific instances has no bearing on the truth of the law itself. That an assumption, if persisted in, will harden into a fact. Absolutely. So the certainty of the truth of this law must remain despite great disappointment and tragedy. Even when you see the light of life go out and all the world go on as though it were still day, you must not believe that because your assumption failed to materialize the truth that assumptions do not material that the truth of that assumptions do materialize is a lie. If your assumptions are not fulfilled, it is because of some error or weakness in your consciousness and I, I can tell you that I had failed in many respects because I had an attachment to the outcome. And once I could release that attachment and build the confidence within me and understanding the, and, and, and burning that into my being about consciousness and that we're living in a high-tech simulated game or a hologram, that boosted my manifestation abilities um, exponentially. And everyone out there watching this video, you can do the same exact thing if you haven't already. But I just wanted to break this down with the naturalness of it and, and how you can start creating much more effectively if you are failing, you know, detaching from that outcome and then creating it that way. Okay, so this is where Neville Goddard says, however, these errors and weaknesses can be overcome. Absolutely, you're, because the, there's no question whether, whether or not the law of assumption works. No question whatsoever. Okay, so therefore, press on to the attainment of ever higher levels of feeling that you are already the person that you want to be by changing your concept of yourself. And remember that the time it takes your assumption to become reality is proportion to the naturalness of being it and also detach from the outcome. Don't have any specific outcome for anything that you're doing because you'll also notice that your anxiety goes down. Because if you have like a specific outcome, like if you're you're trying to sell something or you're trying to do something and you have like a specific outcome for it, it's like your anxiety's increased. I mean, everything you, you're more nervous. But if you're if you're not if you're not attached to any specific outcome, you're going to you're going to increase your performance by 100 percent in everything that you're doing. If you don't have a specific outcome for it, and whether you win or lose, it doesn't matter to you. You're just enjoying your your present moment awareness you're just you're just enjoying the moment and that's when everything comes to you that's when you're like a magnet for everything that you want in life and that is the secret a big secret to the law of assumption and and attracting and creating and assuming anything and getting everything that you want in life is by by detaching from the outcome okay so man surrounds himself with a true image of himself absolutely i mean the world's a mirror okay so and then you transfer to that world that mirrors your person your personal being your concept of yourself every spirit builds itself a house and beyond its house a world and beyond its world a heaven know then that the world exists for you um, for you the phenomenon is perfect what we are that only can we see all that adam had all that caesar could you have and can do Adam called his house heaven and earth. Caesar called his house Rome. You, per you perhaps call yours a cobbler's trade, a hundred acres of land, or a, or a scholar's garret. Yet line for line and point for point, your dominion is as great as theirs. Though 
without fine name. Build, therefore, your own world as fast as you conform your life to the pure idea in your mind that will unfold its great proportion. Emerson. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. I want to give you a brief recap here on Failure, Chapter 24, The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard says, persist. Persist until it becomes natural, which I completely agree with. But I also wanted to just add my own, which is um, detaching from any specific outcome. Remember that. Detach from any specific outcome. Build the confidence with your present level of being and know that even the thing that you're manifesting is not that big of a deal because there's a million more of the same things that you can manifest at any time. And just understanding that confidence within yourself and having that detaches you from any specific outcome. And when you do this, you will, that will happen. The naturalness, the naturalness of achieving that manifestation will come to you 10 times faster and 100% efficiency. That's, that's what I want to take from this chapter. And that's what I want to add to it is detaching from any specific outcome and anything that you do. And you'll see, you'll soon see that you're going to be a magnet for anything that you want in your life, you know, and because you're just attached, you're detached from that outcome. So you're detaching, you're telling the subconscious mind that you now have the thing. So it's going to bring it to you. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below or anything else you want me to cover. And anything, any questions you have, leave those in the box below. I read all the questions and all of the comments. And I was checking the analytics, and it does show that 100% of my viewers are actually subscribed to my channel. So thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you guys and all of your support. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. In this video, Neville Goddard actually hits on the parallel realities or the infinite possibilities within the hologram that we're living in. And he actually covers that a little bit because consciousness is the only reality. And if that is true, which it is true, that means it created itself. That means that consciousness actually created itself and consciousness is God. And you are a particle of God because you actually were God and then created the hologram and then separated yourself and created the illusion of separateness and that means that you are God. That means that we are God, but now we're particles of God because we separated ourselves intentionally when we created the hologram. But Neville Goddard actually touches on this in the infinite realities, which I absolutely love in this chapter. So I'm going to cover that with you today. All right. So this is chapter 26, Destiny, The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. Your destiny is that which you must inevitably experience. Really, it is an infinite number of individual destinies. Right there, he said it. It is an infinite number of individual destinies, each of which when attained is the starting place for a new destiny. So what he's talking about here is the parallel realities. When you actually change your concept of yourself, you shift to a different reality. And then you, you start, then you start a new life basically when you shift. When you shift into this different parallel reality and change your concept of yourself and your inner dialogue, that's a new starting place for your new destiny. And that's what Neville Goddard is talking about right here. I just wanted to expound on that. Okay, since, since life is infinite, the concept of an ultimate destiny is inconceivable. When we understand that consciousness is the only reality, we know that it is the only creator. Okay, that's what I was talking about before. And, and ultimate destiny is inconceivable means that it is infinite. It means it never started and it never finishes. It, it just is. It's just created like the fourth and fifth dimensions, time, space. Everything exists right now. It never began. It never began. It'll never finish in that context of trying to understand time. It never began. And it'll never finish. Everything is created right in it. And it, it lives right now in the present moment at all times okay so when we and when we understand that consciousness is the only reality we know that it is the only creator the cause substance has to be the substance itself it has to be the creator of the substance so the hologram created itself but if god is the hologram if you were the hologram and you created the hologram then you separated yourself and put yourself in this high-tech simulated game then you created an illusion of separateness but really, you are the hologram itself. You just have separated yourself with the ego. And that's how you can regain your power is by knowing this, by connecting to the all source, the all knowing God, which is you, is what created this and then erased your memory and separated everything. 
So that's what Neville Goddard is talking about here. And this means that your consciousness is the creator of your destiny. The fact is, you are creating your destiny every single moment, whether you know it or not. Whether you know it or not, you are intentionally or unintentionally creating everything from your inner dialogue, from your inner conversations, from your perceptions, from your assumptions, from your affirmations, from your visualizations. You're doing this, you're, you're visualizing right now as you're watching this. You're affirming. You're doing you're affirming inside your mind, right? Your inner talking is affirming right now. Whether you can take control of that or not, it is happening. And that's what Neville Guard is talking about right here. You are creating your destiny every moment, whether you know it or not. So take control of that by intentionally changing your concept of yourself. And that changes your inner dialogue, what you're affirming, what you're unconsciously imagining, what you're unconsciously affirming for yourself to be true for your future. And that's what shifts you to these parallel realities within this hologram that we're living in. All right, so much that it is good and even wonderful has come into your life without your having any inkling that you were even the creator of it. You are creating your realities and shifting into different parallel realities based on this. So if something wonderful happened in your life in the past, that's because you created that, whether it was consciously or unconsciously, you had a good inner dialogue about this thing happening. You believed it, you expected it, you visualized it, you lived, you lived with that until it came to you. Okay, so, but Neville Goddard says here, however, the understanding of the causes of your experience and the knowledge that you are the sole creator of the contents of your life, both good and bad, not only make you a much keener observer of all phenomena, but through the awareness of the power of your own consciousness, intensify your appreciation of the richness and grandeur of life. Okay, so once you start learning this, like what I'm explaining to you now, which a lot of you out there right now already understand this. You already know that and you're already working on it. That's why you're watching the channel. So now you have a keener awareness of it. And now you're understanding. Now you're taking conscious control of what you're creating and shifting into that parallel reality that matches this new concept of yourself, the one that's consciously creating. So there's so many different variables about this, but you're on the right track if you're just being aware of being uh, you're a conscious or unconscious creator can change all of these things. And like Neville Goddard said right here, it will also intensify your appreciation of the richness and the grandeur of life, like your gratitude just to have an experience of life, just to just to be appreciative of everything that you already have in your life. And that'll bring you more great things just by having that awareness of that. OK, so and regardless of occasional experiences, to the contrary, it is your destiny to rise to higher and higher states of consciousness and to bring into manifestation more and more of creation's infinite works. Actually, you are destined to reach the point where you realize that through your own desire, you can consciously create your successive destinies. And through the study of this book, The Power of Awareness, with its detailed exposition of consciousness and the operation of the law of assumption, is the master key to the conscious attainment of your highest destiny. So this very day, this very day, right now, in the present moment, approach every experience in a new frame of mind with a new state of consciousness. Assume the noblest and the best for yourself in every respect and continue therein. Make believe that great wonders are possible. Make believe that great wonders are possible, guys. All right, guys, that's the end of this video, and I'm gonna put up the card here for the playlist for the power of awareness. If you have not gone over all those chapters, I have covered every single one of those chapters, and I'm gonna leave up the playlist if you wanna go check those out at any time. I'm gonna pop that card up for you. But I love you guys very much, and remember the scammers in the comments. If somebody comments back to you or replies to your comment, and is impersonating me and saying they want you to contact them at a specific number, WhatsApp or Telegram or Snapchat. That is not me. Do not respond to them. I would never do that. All right, I guys, I love you and I'll see you in the next video. This is the mystery. This is the great secret known by the seers, the prophets and the mystics throughout the ages that you are consciousness that you are the creator 
Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is chapter 27, Reverence. This is The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. This is the final chapter, and one of my absolute favorites of all is absolutely necessary to go through this chapter to get a full understanding of the power of awareness and the power you have within you. Okay, so let's begin here. Wisdom 11, chapter 11, verse 24. Never wouldst thou have made anything if thou hadst not loved it. Okay, so you are God. This is what Neville Goddard is saying. This is what he's interpreting this to mean, which I absolutely agree. You are a particle of God. You are God. You created this hologram that you're living in right now, and you did it because you loved yourself. You are now a particle of God, separate from the being of, of the total God, but you are nonetheless, you are a particle of God and you were God at one point. But you created this, is what I'm getting at. You created the hologram, this high-tech simulated game we're living in now, and you erased your memory of entering it because it is one being. The hologram is one being, and that is God. God is consciousness. The hologram is consciousness. And you created it in the beginning and erased your memory of it and separated everything just because you loved yourself and you wanted to experience a life, experience something other than being everything all at one time. And that is what is explained right here. Never wouldst thou have made anything if thou hadst not loved it. You loved yourself enough to create this reality to where you can experience a life. And that is from Wisdom, chapter 11, 24. In all creation, in all eternity, in all the realms of your infinite being, the most wonderful fact is that which is stressed in the first chapter of this book. That is, you are God. You are the I am that I am. You are God. You are a particle of God, and you are the I am that I am. You are consciousness. You are the creator. This is the mystery. This is the mystery. This is the great secret known by the seers, prophets, and mystics throughout the ages. This is the truth that you can never know intellectually. You can never know this logically. Logically speaking, it appears that there's a beginning to everything. Like scientists try to go back and they try to explain where everything came from, but they'll never be able to figure it out. You'll never be able to determine when things actually started because they never began. It is an illusion that anything ever began. Everything was just created in a time sense. In that context of time, it does not exist a beginning. There is no beginning and there'll never be an end. Everything exists right now and it always has. That is the truth that you can never know intellectually. They will never be able to explain what came first, the chicken or the egg. It cannot be explained. This world you're living in is a hologram. It's a high-tech simulated game that was created and exists all right now everything is an illusion everything from your past is just an illusion it doesn't really exist it never began and it'll never be finished it's it is existing all right now all time space right now in the present moment and another thing that solidifies that we are living in a hologram is if a tree falls in the wilderness and there's nothing there to hear it or observe it it actually doesn't make a sound it does not make a sound unless something is there to to observe it or to hear it if nothing is there the tree does not make a sound that proves that the world is you pushed out there is nothing without without the without the within and i love what neville goddard gets into right here this actually solidifies everything as well who is this you ask your question ask yourself that question who is this you who are you that is you, John Jones or Mary Smith, is absurd. Your name itself, if you look at your ID, you look at your driver's license and you see your name, whatever it is, John Jones or Mary Smith, that's absurd. That is not you. That is not you. You are the hologram itself. And you've just separated yourself from your true being, which is God itself, which is the entire hologram, which is everything. That is the real you. John Jones or Mary Smith is absurd to identify yourself with as always being because it is the consciousness which knows that you are John Jones or Mary Smith. That is you, okay? That you are the consciousness that knows that you are John Jones presently or Mary Smith. It is your greater self, your deeper self, your infinite being 
call it what you will the important thing is that it is within you it is you it is your world it is this fact that underlies the immutable or unchangeable law of assumption it is this fact that underlies the unchangeable law of assumption it is upon this fact that your very existence is built it is this fact that it is the foundation of every chapter of this book no you cannot know this intellectually you cannot debate it you cannot substantiate it you can only feel it you can only be aware of it and the reason for this is because you designed it this way you you designed it to feel real so when you try to you start trying to figure out logically or intellectually everything you always come to a dead end you will never discover the truth because it's all it's a circle there's no beginning and there's no end to a circle and that is the reality the hologram that you're living in right now is a complete circle you will never be able to find the beginning and no one will ever be able to find the beginning it wasn't designed that way it was designed to experience a life you will never be able to locate the beginning but that is not why this is created this is created to enjoy your life and to manifest the life of your dreams and that's what we're learning on this channel so don't focus on where it began or or how can i figure this out from the beginning or the end when is it end don't worry about that the present moment is the only moment that matters and that is the moment of creating happiness of creating appreciation and experiencing the life of interaction and don't let anything distract you from that from your happiness with the present moment and becoming aware of it one great emotion permeates your being you live with a perpetual feeling of reverence the knowledge that your creator is the very self of yourself and never would you have made anything had you not loved it, must fill your heart with devotion. Yes, with adoration. One knowing glimpse of the world about you at any single instant of time is sufficient to fill you with profound awe and a feeling of worship. It is when your feeling of reverence is most intense that you are closest to God, closest to your true self. And when you are closest to God, your life is richest. Our deepest feelings are precisely those we are least able to express. And even in the act of adoration, silence is our highest praise. Meditation and silence are our highest praise. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. That is chapter 27, Reverence. And this is the final chapter of the Power of Awareness. I will post the card up. I'll put the card up right now so you can check out the entire playlist that I have on the Power of Awareness if you've missed any chapters. I have every single chapter. I've covered every single chapter. So check those out. And don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for. Anything you want me to cover in the future, I read all the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.